So the first conversation that we ever had was about reggaeton. And it sounded like it's had a big influence in your life. Y tú tienes hasta un tatuaje sí, de Bad Bunny sí, sí, aquí. Sí, sí, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny. ¿Qué te motivó a hacer eso? La verdad me encanta mucho su música y, y cómo se expresa. Así que lo sé mucho como para igual expresarme. Creo que toda su música tiene mucho sentido, que yo pude como comparar como que me estaban pasando las mismas cosas. Él fue como esa inspiración para yo expresarme de la manera que a mí me gusta igual. Your journey to where you are now led you from MLS to Mexico to USL and now back to MLS. At any point did you stop and think maybe this isn't the track for me? You know, I think ever ever since I started in 2016 when I got drafted, obviously there's a lot of excitement, you know, coming into the league. But a lot of things happened to me along my journey that were very discouraging. I was told a lot of things that probably as a young kid I didn't know how to handle. But I think the toughest year was last year. After being in Mexico and coming back to the States and playing USL, because mentally I'm in a spot where I'm asking myself, am I even good enough to keep playing, to make it back up to MLS? Like, oh, I have all these things going through my head. And it was not till like the end of the season where my back was really up against the wall. Our USL team had folded. The people that were supposedly on my side were, a lot of the times I was hearing it was impossible. That's something I couldn't believe. And I'm not gonna lie, like there was a couple of times where it went through my head, like maybe this is it, like maybe there's, no more Tony Alfaro, no more soccer. And my sister and my mom had a big influence on me, my family, because they really pushed me to believe anything was possible. What were you fighting for for yourself? I think for me, it was to continue fighting for my dream, something that I wanted, that I believed in since I was a kid. That comes within me, but Creo que una de las cosas que siempre vi creciendo es mi papá también. Cuando las cosas pues, no le iban tan bien, mi papá siempre luchó y siempre nos sacó adelante. I've seen your family at a couple of games. How happy are they to see you back? You know, growing up, my parents nunca se perdían ningún partido. Manejaban hasta donde, a donde, a donde fuera el partido, sí. Pero ellos, ellos ahí estaban y para mí esa motivación de tenerla desde, desde chico like it's exciting, you know, and for them too, like uh, they live soccer very passionately, which is exactly why my happiness, I love to share with them because they've also been there, you know, in the not so good times. So we share everything together. Can the service be good? Flores setting it up and across the six, it's loose at the six. Oh, it finds a way, it finds a way. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of bunny here. ¿Tú crees que tú crees que está en tu peak ahora mismo o tú crees que todavía falta tiempo para eso? Para llegar a ese nivel. Yo diría que estoy en el en el camino correcto para llegar, pero aún siento que que me falta poquito para llegar, porque yo soy muy a veces perfeccionista, siempre quiero mejorar, superarme más, así que Siempre pienso que, que hay cosas que mejorar, detalles que corregir, así que mi pique está cerca. Está Para cerca. ponerlo, está cerca. <risa> está llegando. Está cerca, sí, casi, sí. casi. I come from a small family. It's uh, my mom, my dad, my older sister, and my younger brother. Nací en México, en Michoacán. My parents brought me over at a really young age. We started living with my family in, in LA, at Long Beach actually. Went to school there for maybe two years, and then we moved to Santa Barbara, which is where I was raised. Growing up, a lot of things that impacted me was the struggle, you know, that, that me and my family were going through, or my, my parents more than anything, you know. I think where we really struggled was those first couple of years when we first moved. We didn't have a lot, we didn't have a lot of money. We were living to the day to day. And I think it was one time at school where a teacher told my mom, hey, eh, póngale una, una playera a Tony porque pues, hace calor y para que se quite la sudadera. You know, my, mom, my mom's eyes just kind of watered because we didn't have a lot, you know? We, did, we, we barely had any clothes, you know? Y yo me recuerdo esos momentos que, que hoy en día 
eh, por eso yo me siento muy orgulloso de, de, de mí mismo y de mi familia por, por siempre estar por mí y por siempre apoyarme. Eh, también hubo un momento que, que recuerdo no teníamos dónde vivir. Yo recuerdo un día que agarramos las cosas, nos subimos al carro y, y llegamos como un car wash. Yo estaba pequeño y yo, yo le digo a mi mamá, ¿por qué llegamos a un car wash? No, es que ahorita vamos a ir a la casa. Dale, dale. Y andábamos como de L.A. a Santa Barbara buscando dónde quedar porque en verdad no teníamos, no teníamos dónde. Así que en esos momentos uno es chiquito, uno no, no le pone mucha atención por qué pasan las cosas, pero pues ya de grande cuando te pones a pensar qué estaba pasando, por qué nos pasó, pero al fin del día nos pasó y, y lo superamos como familia, 